Hallelujah. The title of my message today, I'm going to speak to you about salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. Yes. So oftentimes we tend to focus on our problems, guys, as we heard, and where we have been in life and lose focus of God and his power. So when God created the earth, his original intention that we keep hearing over and over from our Bible study and from talking, from pastor talking, original intention of our God is to give a man dominion to rule over the birds, the sea, everything that creeping on the earth. That was his original intention. But as you may know, Adam did a number on us. Up to this day, we are struggling because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. But you know what? For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So what I want to encourage you guys is I'm going to take you on a journey. I want to, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay? I want you to listen to me and follow. There is a meaning behind what I'm about to share with you. So there was a couple that decided to take a trip to Jamaica, a cruise to Jamaica, right? So they purchased ticket all included, everything included. They wiped out their savings to buy this ticket for the cruise to Jamaica. Okay, they were excited about the trip and they could not wait to go to the trip. So while in the cruise ship, everyone gets out of their room to go eat dinner at night. But this particular couple, they stay in their room eating cheese and crackers that they brought out from home. Okay? So on day number five, one guy realized that, noticed that these people never come out for dinner and decided to go and ask them, guys, why don't you never come out to eat dinner? In embarrassment, they say, you know, we spend all our money purchasing for this ticket, so we don't have money saved to eat dinner in this fancy dinner restaurant. And the guy was like, what? Did you know that your ticket include dinner in the ship on day number five? They were told that your ticket you purchase for this cruise includes your dinner. So they couldn't believe it. They were so ashamed, like, oh my God, all this time we were eating cheese and crackers while we could be eating, enjoying this fancy dinner at the dinner table at night. So my question to you is, how many of us act so poor eating cheese and crackers while Jesus paid in full the price for us to join the banquet with our Father in heaven? How many times do we act so poor, guys? So everything in, is included in your salvation package. Everything is included. Jesus came to set us free from the power of sin and death. And that is why Bible says, Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? That is, you can read that from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. So most of us live on a survival mode. We have accepted our condition for so long and don't even know that there is a way out. When Jesus walked to that pool, he knew that paralyzed man has been in that condition for 38 years. He knew it. So for those who have walked with Jesus for so long, Jesus have a way to talk to his people. So he always asked what seems to be the obvious. He asked the guy who was laying there for 38 years, do you want to get well? Now the guy was so confused. He's like, why is this asking me? Do I want to get well? Doesn't he see I'm paralyzed and I've been in this condition for so long? So instead of him answering the question, he started giving Jesus excuses. Oh, I have been in this because, you know, when the angel come to start the water, everybody goes before me. That's not the question. Jesus did not ask him that question. He said, do you want to get well? Hallelujah. So, the man was so confused, like I said, and he started giving excuses instead of answering. So how many times did Jesus ask us the same question? What do you want? Grace, what do you want for me to do for you? Maggie, what do you want from me? And instead of us giving excuses, we're supposed to tell Lord what we want. The same happened. This is not a surprise. We remember what happened in the Garden of Eden, right? Do you remember when Adam ate that apple? God knew what they did, right? He walked down and he asked Adam, 
did you eat the app, the fruit I told you not to eat? What was Adam's answer? The woman you gave me. The woman you gave me. So it's, it's amazing how we are so easy and quick to give excuses like Sister Maggie very profoundly shared this morning instead of owning our problems. Okay, so God knows already why you are in the condition you are in. So some have been in waiting for perfect wife to come along, right? Some have been waiting for the baby to be born. Some have been waiting for healing to come by. Some have been waiting for the team to change. You know, you are leading a team and the team is so bad. You're waiting for the team to change. And some are waiting. This is my favorite one. Some are waiting for their teenager, teenager guy, teenager baby to turn around because the teenager calls you every single name by child of God. So you're waiting for that teenager to turn around. And some are waiting to start their business, their dream business. Some are waiting for promotion. Some people are waiting for their vacation home or for their home, for the vacation, to buy a first house. Whatever it is that you are waiting on today, don't let the cares of this world cloud your vision. Hallelujah. I mean, the Bible says, if you look at Habakkuk 2, 2, it says, write your vision and make it plain. So when Jesus comes to ask you, Grace, what do you want from me? Make sure you have the answer because your vision is plain and it's clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to remind you that God knows your destiny. Everyone's story has been written already. And now it's just being read. Nothing catches God by surprise. God is not in heaven scratching his head. Oh my God, what is Eric doing right now? Why did Grace make that sin? Why did Maggie, or oh, whatever name it is, why did, you, why did that do that? Why did you just curse? Why did you just go to the club? Why did you just cheat? For, you know, cheat on your wife. Why? God he knows everything. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Hallelujah. Nothing catches him by surprise. Now, I want the church to help me today. The enemy's job is to do what? Can you guys tell me? What is the devil's job? One more time. What's the devil's job? Yes, the enemy's job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God, hallelujah. But God, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the question is, is it possible to live a victorious life on this earth? Is it possible to overcome the devil and all his schemes and plans he has on us? Is it possible? How do we do that? That's the question. So, children of God, I want to equip you with something that if you follow this, you will live victorious life. 